sharp, savage teeth, hairless, gray skin, and a human-like fist. Sharp, savage teeth, hairless, gray skin, and a human-like fist. Sharp, sharp, <laughs> Why is she reading like that? Why that? <laughs> Why that news reporter lady a rapper and she don't even know that. Bars. Bars. The news reporter bars. Bars. Sharp. Savage. Hairless. Teeth. Fangs. Ouch. And a Killed human. My fish. cow. Sharp. It's like the. Scary. They animal. On, they only had like a really huge Sharpie, so they're writing the cue cards like one, one word one at word. a time and somebody's <laughs> dropping them. Dude, they they're she, trying she to, was trying to make it sound dramatic each time. Sharp, savage, teeth. <laughs> Didn't know where the sentence was going, so it was just like inflecting every word. Time. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make them all count. Dude, maybe they were trying to get like a very uh, a very elaborate fancy shot, but it was really far away. <laughs> so that's why she's like she's a hundred meters away from the camera, and they're like, <laughs> the next word is sharp, sharp. <laughs> they're texting him to her one word at a time. <laughs> In all caps. <laughs> uh, chupacabra. Uh, chupacabra. The freaking you're, chupacabra, bud. You're you're gonna have to start today. All right, we can start it off. Um, but before we before we get there, before we dive directly into the goat suck, Jeez. suck goat. Uh, so, you, you know about the concept of a totally original sentence. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's I, a subreddit I, I dedicated think you may to have it. Just I think. had one. <laughs> Before we dive right into the suck out, <laughs> you're right. You're right. Anyway, you were saying, um, are you warm, bud? <laughs> I'm trying, dude. Shout out to uh, who was was it? Hawk in the Facebook group. Somebody in the nah. Facebook group was like, "Dear sweary boys, please don't die," because <laughs> you guys <laughs> saw the Minneapolis uh, the Minneapolis forecast for the I, next I like, coming 72 hours. I like that your sister jumped in there too. Like. Yo, you you also live here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are going to be subjected you, to the same bullshit. You should also be careful. Yeah. Um. So far, so good. So far, so good. You guys, it's sincerely supposed to be fifty below tomorrow. No, it's not the that feel, bad. The feels like temperature. Well, that's nonsense. But it's going to actually be thirty, 40 to fifty degrees. Yeah, it's going to mm. suck. Uh, but we'll mm. make it. Um. Do we have any voicemails you want to get to this week? I don't know. Okay. That's a negatory Batman. <laughs> I haven't looked at him. That sounds like a negatory Batman. Um, we we had a handful, but you know what? We can just dive right into the suck goat if you want to dive right into the suck goat. Hell yeah. We only have a we just have one announcement, which is this Saturday. Oh yeah. Is our Facebook Lab episode. Beom, 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 beom. <laughs> Uh, every hundred iTunes reviews we get, uh, we do a Facebook live episode. We do it on our Facebook page. I haven't uh, looked at those in a long time. Do we have like, how many are we at? Uh, is this three? We're, we're well over 300 uh -oh. now. So time to, uh, time to do one before we get to 400 and we got to do another one. Double episode. It's a double album. Ooh, double, double Facebook live. Wu-Tang forever. Um, probably the greatest double album, by the way. I, I, I know you didn't ask. I don't but. think I would argue with you about that. Um, shit, I forgot what time we said we were doing it at. <laughs> uh, well, I want to say it was 2 p.m. Central. That sounds right. That's right, isn't it? I don't know. I think I put it on my calendar if you want to stall for 10 seconds. All right. This um, Saturday I'll is... stall for 10 seconds. So. Oh, you know what? I didn't even put it on my calendar. <laughs> it's 2 p.m. Central. <laughs> okay. Tight. It's 2 p.m. Central. Um. So 2 p.m. Central Time, if you go to our Facebook page, uh, me and Spencer will be hanging out live on Facebook with you guys, and we'll answer questions, and we'll uh, we'll tell you anything you want to know about the show, or about our beliefs in uh, the other worldly, or whatever, whatever. So yeah, hop over to uh, our Facebook page. You can also check out the Facebook group. Uh, we'll post the live stream in the Facebook group as well. So if you just search the What If Podcast on Facebook uh, in the groups section, we will come up. And we'll put a link to it on the subreddit too. How about that? We'll put it on all our socials so you can come see us and hang out live. Yeah. Yeah. That's this Saturday, February 2nd at 2 p.m. Central Time in the U.S. And I'm yeah. not going to try to do the math for any other you work. time zones. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know better than we do what that conversion rate is. All right. Tell me goat sucker stories. Chupa means suck. 
Gross. Cobra means goat. Cool. Suck goat. <laughs> All right, guys. See you next week. We out here. We're done here. <laughs> we've. I think we made it to about five minutes. That's, we, that's pretty good. We've unveiled the mystery. It's a suck goat. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> Don't get sucked by the goat. Uh, no, it's the opposite, actually. It's a thing that sucks on goats. Mm. You uh, gotta be more specific, bud. The chupacabra actually more accurately <laughs> well, turns to... Oh, gross. Well, uh, what'd you say? I said, well, <laughs> well, I'm not the one talking about sucking on this goats. This is your fault. <laughs> yeah, you brought this upon yourself. Um, no, it really does more accurately translate to uh, goat sucker, and that's because the chupacabra is believed to be vampiric in nature. Uh, it sucks the blood of its enemies. Says who? Well, <laughs> says those who have uncovered their bloodless livestocks. Mm. Um, it's not just goats, though. Goats uh, was one of the first cases. We'll get there in a second. Um, but farm animals in general, chickens, bunnies, all kinds of aminals have been found with some hole pokes, some puncture wounds, and appear to be sans their blood. Mm. So I mean, that'll happen if you get a good-sized hole in you. That's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> Start leaking, but Depends on how big that hole is. Um, I'll, I'll, go, I'll, I'll give us a little history to start things off. That would be lovely. Okay. So the first reports of the Chupacabra go back to uh, March of 1995 uh, to a town called... <laughs> I'm, you guys... Okay, quick, uh, quick peek behind the curtain. <laughs> what hap- What had happened was the reason I'm laughing right now is because I blinded the shit out of myself with my laptop. <laughs> Spencer woke his computer up in the studio and had his brightness on a trillion, <laughs> and literally made like a like a movement away from his computer. It hurt. It physically Dude, hurt how I, bright that was. I do this all the time because when I when I'm working in the office, the lights are a lot brighter. When I come here to the studio where we have it nice and moody, with we don't our really fuck with lights in here. We we. The only lights lights we fuck with are her pyramid-shaped salt lamps, Uh, and the office brightness on the laptop does not compute. And so, Mm -hmm. anyway, Spencer Spencer has perished. I don't have a good excuse. I've been in this house literally all day because it sucks outside. Because it sucks so bad outside. (laughs) I'm going to be here for the next 48 hours. Uh, Guys, send me weird shit to watch and read, please. Dude, amen, man. I don't think anybody in the States leaving for 72 hours. All right, go history, sucker. So March of 1995, we're, we're in a town called... Canovanas, uh, Puerto Rico. And uh, on a farmer's ranch there, a newspaper in Canovanas reported that uh, eight of the farmer's sheep were found dead in their field. Dicks. Um, when the farmer encountered his sheeps, sheepses? Sheep. Sheep. It's just Sing- the same word. Singular and Deer. plural. Damn. Sheep. Sheepses is cooler, though. Mm. When he done that still wouldn't be right, When though. he done found his sheepses. <laughs> Uh, that would mean that the singular is sheeps. That's all wrong. Well, whole program. Agree to disagree. <laughs> yeah. um, he found what appeared to be three puncture wounds in the. They said their chest region, which is kind of weird. How do you get bit in the chest? I, I'm not get entirely together, sure. Go. Um, they also all appeared to be. Uh, the way that the way that they say it is drained of their blood. So, one of the things, if you actually look at some of the pictures from the Puerto Rico uh, investigations, and we'll get to the investigations, but when you look at them, um, a lot of these animals are they look they look dead, but they don't look mangled. They're not like there's not like fur and blood. And actually, this is one of the things that reminded me of the cattle mutilation stuff in this stuff is that. A lot of the pictures of the actual animals are, there is very clearly like puncture wounds, but they're not like covered in their own blood. They're not like, um, it's not like very obvious that a wolf, you know, ate half its body and then departed. They're just, they're just dead animals with these very clear puncture wounds. I mean, there's some blood, like you can see they go into their bodies, but that's kind of the only like thing you see. They don't appear to be, have been like ravaged by a predator of some kind. Um, so yeah, so, uh, this news of this started traveling around Canavanos and, uh, there were some rumors that satanic cults were doing satanic cult things mm. in the fields to their, uh, livestocks, uh, which 
again, actually is similar to the cattle mutilation stuff, theories of there being people who do weird things to these animals. Is there evidence of that actually happening ever, of people killing goats and draining them of blood for ritualistic purposes? You know, that's a good is, question. does it just sound right? We should probably respond to that guy from the Church of Satan who wants oh, us to yeah. interview him and ask him if that's a thing. Hey, that how him... often do you kill goats? Yeah. What do you do with their blood? Let's, uh, let's kick this interview off right. So first question. How many buckets of goat blood are in your house right now? And uh, secondarily, how did you get it? Um, are I you Chupacabra? I'm wondering if maybe it's just... It's whether or not there's evidence that it happens a lot. It just seems like it's something that's very evil and nefarious. You know right, what I mean? Yeah, that's that's always good evidence when something just sounds cool. No, but I'm not. I'm not saying it's <laughs> this motherfucker's laughing away from his <laughs> this microphone. This topic is fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, <laughs> this motherfucker. <laughs> this motherfucker. Like it's an animal, right? Uh, somebody. Some, no, dude. No, dude. It's okay. so many other things. Okay. So tell tell me about that. We're going to get to aliens, and then you'll be excited. Um, <laughs> so uh, more reports of, uh, of these types of deaths and, um, and bloodless discoveries of farm animals in Canovanos happened all through the summer of 1995. Um, the worst month they had was August, where they counted over 150 different animals dying. In one month, which I don't know. I I looked up Canovanas. It doesn't look like a very big town. So that seems like that would be a lot of their livestock in the town uh, for 30 days worth of deaths. It seems like a lot. Yeah. Um, it got so bad. And again, like, yeah, like I know you're fucking around. Like, yes, there are, there are many of these that are probably animals. Um, or a parasite of some sort or. A parasitic a animal, potentially. Something. We'll get there. Um, but but there were people who were reporting these things, and, and the amount of deaths that were happening in such a strange way got so bad that uh, Puerto Rico's government put uh, like civil defense employees in charge of going to the to Canavanos to investigate, like what is happening, why is it happening. So again, is it is it bullshit? Maybe that's. But that's one of those ones where I'm like, well. Farmers see coyotes take their livestock down all the time. So what about this was different in a way where there was a volume and a manner in which this was happening that Puerto Rico's government was like, yeah, let's send some people out there to investigate. This isn't just like, you need to keep track of your livestock better. You know what I mean? Uh, yes. I'm not saying that's indefensible. I'm just saying that's one of those points where I'm like, oh, that's interesting enough to me. Also, like, where is this being reported and how? Um, a lot of this came from newspapers in Canavanas around the time. Okay. Um, I don't have like links to the actual newspapers, but That's I've what seen, I mean, like, where are we getting it from? Um, well, I watched a couple documentaries about Chupacabra and I saw some screenshots of, uh, the actual news articles that were being posted. Okay. So I don't know. Okay. That's all I got. I watched a Monster Quest episode about it. Mm. That was pretty buck wild. Cool. Mon Monster Quest. <laughs> Is a very Buckwild show if you've never seen that show before. I have not. I'm still working my way through the Great British Bake Off at the moment. Are you? Mm -hmm. Look at you. Oh, yeah. Is it good? Uh, it's the best high TV there is. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah. That's a pretty bold statement. Mm, and I would like it? for all of our listeners to tweet at Spencer and tell them your, your no, differing I opinion. I mean, I, whatever. I'm No, I'm just, I'm just saying I feel like a lot of people are very passionate about whatever they're, mm. they're like... Dude, right. you gotta watch this when you're high. No, things. no, like nothing, nothing bad ever happens. Yeah, sick. Everybody likes each other. Everyone sick. has an adorable accent. Right. Um, all they do is bake. <laughs> do you like your cake? I love my cake. Right. Thank you. Right. <laughs> the end. <laughs> yes. Next episode. There's an unlimited number of them, basic, essentially, on Netflix right now. How many episodes are we talking? Uh, like seven seasons or something Ooh, yeah with 10 ish each oh yeah you got like 70 hours of this shit on netflix oh, right dude, now dude spencer's yeah. gonna do so much bit bake off getting you're look, gonna get baked and then you're gonna bake look it's with the bakers real cold outside <laughs> <laughs> only a couple things Not that make sense anywhere. to do yeah anyway um 
Word. If you want to watch a Buckwild show, there's a Buckwild show on the History Channel called Monster Quest with cryptozoologists who go to places and explore these phenomenons. Mm. And it's okay. very awesome because it's like guys in ponytails with like Is Lauren Coleman chops involved? and uh, no Lauren Coleman. Mm. Um, he maintains a museum of cryptids in Portland, Maine. Ooh! If we're looking for ways to waste our Patreon subscribers' monies, I I have family in Portland, Maine, right now. So Let's go. maybe we should but go. Maybe not right now. Let's maybe wait a couple months till it don't suck. Is Portland colder than it is here? I'm not, I don't know. It's got to be close, right? No, mm. they got they got the ocean. We should to warm go them when up. we can go to the beaches and stuff, though. True. Yeah, but the seafood's probably good all the time. Sign me up. It's too frozen. Too frozen. Um. So yeah, so they they deployed uh they deployed people from oh yeah like the goat police went to check on it the goat police went to check on it uh they in in Puerto Rico they interviewed one of the guys who works for uh one of like the civil defense institutes in Puerto Rico mm-hmm. who sixteen years ago was like one of the people who went to Canavanas to go investigate and he was the one who was like showing pictures that he took from his investigation so just to got it to tell you where some of the stuff's coming from um. So yeah, they they estimate that over uh, thirty people had either witnessed an actual chupacabra or the evidence of a chupacabra in Canavanos around the time. Now, and a chupacabra so, looks like so the the first instance of it that we have from a description comes from a woman named Madeline Tolentino, who uh, a writer named. Um, Benjamin Radford, who wrote uh, a pretty defining book on the Chupacabra phenomenon, and I'll get to him later. Um, He went to Puerto Rico to interview Madeline because she was cited in one of the newspapers uh, around the initial sighting. So he wanted to go talk to her and see what she saw. When he interviewed her in, I think it was in like the mid to late 2010s, she maintained her original description uh, mostly of what she said the first time. And I kind of want to read you the whole thing because it's kind of weird. I, I would love to hear it. Would you actually? Yeah. Okay. Unless we're talking like multiple pages of description. No, right? no, no. It's like two paragraphs. Yeah, great. Okay. This is, this is Madeline's uh, initial, this is translated from her initial interview. Not all this made the paper. I was helping my mother since she was getting ready to move into that location. That's, I think that location is the house. Again, this is translated, so it's a little sloppy. That's when I noticed that a vehicle was about to park right outside the house. I took a look to make sure it wouldn't block access to the house. It was then that I noticed the fellow driving the car was frightened, his eyes wide open, and he started to back out. His attitude led me to believe something was going to hit him or maybe someone was going to mug him. It made me go up against the glass which you can see is quite wide and faces the front of the house. It's like a, she's talking about like looking out the front window window in the house. Yeah. I then became aware that a creature was walking on two legs, apparently having come quite a distance from the corner. And I don't really know what that means. It would seem that the creature became aware of the car and didn't want to get too close and stood in front of the window through which I was looking outward. It had dark gray eyes with no whites and was constantly moving its eyes side to side. They were damp and protruding, running up to its temples, spread to the sides. The creature was some four feet tall, walking like a human on both legs. Arms were drawn back in an attack position. It had three long, skinny fingers. The arms were also very long, drawn back. Its hair was rather short and close to the body and (laughs) well-combed, which... Great adjective for your your alien beast uh, and well-combed. It had apparently been burned by something and had some round things on its body. The region seemed ashen as if something had burned it right there. It revealed pinkish purple skin as if the top layer had fallen off. The legs were really long and skinny and I could see separate toes. For a nose, it had two little holes and its mouth was a slash. It was closed. At no moment did it open its mouth. I never saw fangs or teeth. And this thing did what? I don't have any other um, 
any other evidence as to whether or not she had livestock or her mom had livestock that That's got crazy. bitten or eaten. That's a crazy point for that story to end. Right there, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I have Did from you run away? Her Did it translation. run away? Did you kill it? Did it kill something? <laughs> Did you, Were you fucking <laughs> with it? Um, but yeah, so I think what, what kind of was happening was there's animals getting killed. People haven't had this much livestock die. It seems like it's dying in a weird way. Stories start traveling around the town. Hey, there's some crazy fucking animal that's fucking with our livestock. And she sees something. Lizard we don't man. know what she saw. Yeah, I mean, it's like she's describing like with half sweet hair with very well combed. Mm-hmm. Might not have been good hair, but it was well combed. Whatever it was, he's working it. He's working it. Whatever yeah. he had, he was a stylish motherfucker, <laughs> no matter what. Even though he had previously been on fire, <laughs> which sorry, recently apparently. Sorry about you, bud. Um. It kind of sounds the way she describes it is almost like this thing is like half gargoyle, half like fucking gray alien. Yeah, she say what color it is. <clears throat> um, I think Other like the gray eyes, grayish. I think. Um, okay. Or maybe she doesn't say. Others have described them as grayish or gray greenish. Others have described them as dogs, also. So let's not. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we'll get there. Put too much stake in that. Don't worry. We'll get I'm there. To, I'm trying to hone in on the, the original one. Yes. This is the original one. There are also, there are people who said in some of the Count of Honest sightings, they said they had potentially seen it swoop and that. Uh, As in it can fly? I guess. Or okay. maybe like f- fall out of a tree in a, <laughs> in a clean motion. <laughs> in a coordinated way. Yes. Uh, some some people reported that it had like spines coming out of its back, uh-huh. which some people have described as potentially like closed wings. So this is part of the problem for me. Uh, there are so many descriptions of what a quote unquote chupacabra, chupacabra could is. Be. Yes. Sometimes it's four feet tall and walks upright. Sometimes uh-huh. it looks like a lizard. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it has spines. Sometimes it has hair. Yep. Sometimes it's gray. Sometimes it's green. Sometimes it looks like a dog. Sometimes it looks like a kangaroo. Sometimes it flies. Sometimes, mm-hmm. like, how are these all the same thing? With yeah. It, with any other, like, cryptid or even paranormal anything, there's at least, uh, like, some commonality Yeah. in how people describe encounters with it. Otherwise, like, why... With anything else, we wouldn't say that this is one thing. That's probably true. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, I think there's also some semblance of like... um, Is chupacabra like an umbrella term? That's kind of what I was just going to get towards. There are different like like subsets of chupacabras? Or or a term for this is an animal that... just, Just a banner term for an animal that is like fucking with people and killing things and... Draining its blood, draining their blood. If I bit a goat really hard, could I be a chupacabra? I mean, maybe. If I combed my hair nicely enough. Th- now we're talking. <laughs> and set my if you get abdomen a, on fire. If you get a fresh fade, and you put a cigarette out on your leg, Jeez. and then bite a goat. I am chupacabra. You are chupacabra. Can Spencer dunk? <laughs> no. Is Spencer chupacabra? <laughs> yes. Shark seven. Six. <laughs> You are sharp. You are savage. Maybe that's what she meant by sharp. Not like pointy, but like... Sharp, like well-dressed. Yeah, well-combed. GQ. Mm-hmm. G- G- GQ nope, Cobra. I'm not going to get mm. there. Sharp. I almost had it, dude. <laughs> I almost had it. GQ Cobra? G- mm. Stop. I'll workshop it. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> I'll workshop it. I'll be back. I'll be back in 30 More minutes. More like Chupa Nah, bro. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm walking into the cold. <laughs> just like walking into the ocean. <sighs> Never coming back. Sharp. Savage. Um, okay, so this was 90-something that she saw the, the alien from Signs walking through her front yard? Yeah, 95. Well, actually, the alien from Species, but oh, we'll get back to that as well. That was also 95-ish, wasn't it? Uh, yes. That was in a pool, though. Did she have a pool? Uh, no, but mm. she had seen Species that year. So Benjamin thinks that it's a possibility that she saw something 
and attributed a recent experience to mm. what she saw, which is part of why I think like a lot of, so this, there's an interesting part of the media element of this here where one very, um, what would you call it? One very like ostentatious description of this thing because no one had really seen it and every, no one knew what was going on. There was sort of like a small panic in this town. One woman is like, I think I saw this. And as soon as it hit the newspapers, everyone was like, oh shit, that's what's killing all our animals. And okay. then that description started getting publicized around, which is something we talk about sometimes. I saw it too. Yeah, exactly. I don't just suck at farming. It's a mythical beast. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the one I saw had red eyes, you know, and you just saw an owl in a tree, but, mm -hmm. like, because you had her description in your head, then that became your description plus whatever you saw added onto it, which we've talked about a little bit about some of the, like, the alien encounter stuff with, like, the alien tropes building onto each other and things like that, where once it gets into the public sort of mindset, it kind of grows and can be transported right. to other people's quote-unquote experiences. Um, but one of the things I do find kind of fascinating about the Chupacabra stuff, and I'll keep going a second here, is like, if you look it up, for some reason, it gets written about in a lot of very, like, mainstream publications, more so than a lot of the other cryptid things. In what context? Um, just like acknowledging its existence at all. I mean, a lot of it is in an attempt to disprove its strangeness but i mean like there's articles in national geographic and abc and the bbc and like for some reason it hits some nerve that makes it more more accessible maybe or more i don't know what it is but i, I think because of the recency of it you know like we can we can basically track down when the first instance of this yeah. creature or phenomenon was yeah and it's, you know, 30 years ago to the like wide range of types of reports and location of those reports. Yeah. And then you also add in that there are a lot of people who claim to have photos of these things or yeah. actual bodies of these things. Yeah. I did. And then a lot of other people who also say like, no, I can tell you definitively what that thing you have is. So I think most of those stories I've seen from like BBC and national geographic are like, here's how bad science becomes urban legend, right. you know, rather than like, let's figure out what the chupacabra is. It's more so of like, no, this is one that we can actually nail down is like definitively this thing. And here's how these stories got passed on for sure. More so than something like even Bigfoot where it's like, I don't really know because we don't yeah. have any hard evidence and it's been happening for longer. And the stories are, harder to trace and all that. Yeah, I think that's well said. And I think it does it does sustain for for both the reasons you said and also I think a third one which kind of goes back to like the evidence-based one is like like some farmers have shot them and been like this doesn't look like anything I've ever seen before. Is this like a fucking chupacabra? What the fuck is this? Mm -hmm. Um but there's also the other end of it which is people who wake up and like all the rabbits in their rabbit farm are dead. And they're like, what the fuck is this? And why is this the case? And I think one of the things too, and we'll get into this too, in the what's really what happening. farm rabbits for? Um, do you I, milk them? I don't know. Is that, do is you a, eat them? Is a rabbit farm a thing? Do people just do have rabbits? <laughs> do you just eat rabbits? I mean, a lot of people eat rabbit. You can eat rabbit. I don't think people farm rabbits. I could be wrong. For sure they do. Well, how do you, for what though? How do you, you think skin you, them? how do you think you get a rabbit in like a restaurant? Somebody shoots them, you hunt them. I don't think that's just like also. How often do you see rabbit in restaurants? It's not very common. I'm googling rabbit farm right now, just <laughs> just so that we can <laughs> rabbit farm. On the British Baking Show the other day, they were making meat pies with pigeon in them. Uh, do you farm pigeons? I mean, I guess a, if you grow a British significant listeners, number, do you all of any farm of them. pigeons over there or no? <laughs> uh, we could drive to Menominee and go to the Singer House Rabbit Farm. Sick. Patreon.com <laughs> slash what if podcast. It's not going to be a weird one, guys. We just want to go see a rabbit farm. It's just going to be a cute one. How do rabbit or farms a sad one. work? Uh, probably a sad one. Mm. More than anything, probably a sad one. Um, 
But I was just going to say, I think it's the evidence of people having like thought they took a picture of one, thought they shot one, thought they saw one, whatever, on top of the evidence of what they think is left behind by a chupacabra, these like puncture wounded, bloodless, weird animals. And I think it it plays on some of the same um, like spookiness of the cattle mutilation stuff where people are like, well, this doesn't look like anything a predator would do because if a because if a coyote was hungry, why is it going to just go around and kill eight sheep one by one by like literally just biting them in the neck and like breaking their jugular, but then not eating any of them, not dragging any of them back to you know some sort of back. some sort of den or I mean maybe, but I'm just saying that's the trope that gets repeated in a lot of these stories, which is, I think lends to people being like something is additionally weird here than. Can can we go back to the bloodless thing for a minute? Yes. How do we know? Like, are these animals being cut open and in some of the investigations, I believe they were autopsies on these rabbits. So the, well, the bad science part is I think a great explanation for a lot of this. It's the whole lividity thing. Have you heard of lividity where the blood, pools because it's not being pumped through your body anymore yeah yeah and then it did not only does it pool but then it thickens because yeah, your body like sort of gets cold coagulates or right. solidifies so then you can take a goat that's been dead for whatever 16 hours and you can hang it upside down thinking that blood's going to come out and like no blood comes out and you can cut it open and it doesn't just like bleed like a normal animal right. would bleed so is that what people are talking about or is it more than that I think that's part of it. I think the other part of it is that it's not like messy. They're not like found in pools of blood with like, you know, their throats ripped out. It's just the puncture mark stuff that seems to be um, the repeated trope. And again, that goes back to the cattle mutilation stuff, right? Where it's like they're not found in like a bloody mess of their own organs or no one was eating their belly organs or. It's hard to say with some of them, but yeah, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes they just find like. Skulls attached to spinal cords. Right. right. The, whole, the whole thing's gone. Yes. But I mean more so like I think that's what they mean in the Chupacabra cases by bloodless is they're not like bloody scenes of right. attack or consumption or whatever. Yeah. So so I think a little bit of both, I guess. Hmm. The yeah, the implication then being that if a wolf or a coyote or something were to attack an animal, it would look different. Yeah, that that it would have done some sort of um, predatory like consumption. The idea being and do that, we like, know that. I mean, I don't, I don't know enough about how wolves and coyotes behave. So I've seen both. When I was looking through this, a lot of people were saying like, "Oh, it seems to make sense that any predator would be killing for a reason, right?" Like, you watch any nature show, you watch a wolf hunt, like it's stalking its they prey. Hungry. They hungry. They they're stalking and stalking and stalking till they kill, and then when they kill, they eat right away. And like, yeah, everyone's seen on a nature show what a deer looks like after it's been eaten at by a wolf or a coyote or whatever. Like, it's a it's a bloody mess. Um, the I've seen a couple people related to the chupacabra stuff say it's not entirely true that animals don't just kill. Um, there's been reports of coyotes like. Just, just really hate goats. Well, not necessarily goats, but I mean, like, have you heard of like sometimes dogs just the getting goat killed by goat? War of nineteen ninety five. Yes, I have. It wasn't very bloody, <laughs> but damn, a lot of a lot of good animals died. Mostly goats. Mostly goats. Yeah, they, coyotes gained a lot guys, of ground that year. Spoiler alert: the goats lost super bad. <laughs> it was not cool. Sharp. Yes. Savage teeth. Well dressed when they went to battle. It's a long time before that's not funny. Well dressed when they went to battle. I think it should just be our new default for anything that's scary going forward. Sharp, savage. It's so great be- because of how like she stops after every word. You could pull any one of those words out of context too, and it would work equally well. I think the I think the savage drop would be really good for any beat. You know, just like as soon as that beat drops, comes mm. in, just. Savage. Savage. Rude. Rude. Wait, she said rude? No, I said that. I don't know. I'm just saying words now. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, anyway. Mean, you got any good, like, dog, chupacabra, rabid, mangy guys? So, more generally speaking, not super specifically speaking, um, 
the the chupacabra phenomenon of livestock being punctured and killed in groups and not eaten uh, like a predator uh, started to travel outside of Puerto Rico after 1995. There's been, again, chupacabra sightings. You can call that what you want at this point. Um, starting in for like from 95 onward, but they've been reported as far north as Maine, as far south as like South American countries like Chile. Um, tons of eyewitness accounts. Again, they range in a ton of different ways of like what the actual chupacabra is. But the thing that maintains through all of them is, again, like these puncture wounds in like the bloodless, non-predatory scene. Because um, some of the stuff that I've, some of the stuff that gets reported on like the, you know, weird news stories. Yes. He's like, I saw a weird animal that I couldn't identify. It must have been the chupacabra. For sure. And it's now been removed from any of the like predatory aspects. It's just like a it's a weird looking dog thing. That's not quite a dog thing. And yeah, maybe, yeah. But maybe it's a possum, but maybe it's a raccoon. And there's a lot in the Southern, uh, the Southern part of the U S Southwestern parts of the U S of the chupacabra being what you're talking about, which is appearing to be uh dog like in nature. Um, and people have said, Oh, they look like dogs, but they have particularly long, um, incisors like long fangs basically wait is that the canine tooth of the canine i think so incisor what's an incisor mm, i don't know not a dentist dear <laughs> dear orthodontist <laughs> of what if which one's the incisor where it's on the inside what them teeth do of your mouth um yeah so so what them teeth do is <laughs> Might be your second unique sentence of the night. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was not a compliment. I'm taking it as one anyway. Um, yeah, so in the southern United States, a lot of the reports are around these sort of coyote-like but strange coyote dog-like creatures. Spooky dogs. Spooky dogs. Um, ghost dogs? Ooh, ghost dog. Um, that get found, spotted, sometimes shot, killed photographed and actually that monster quest episode focuses on a couple different cases like that where people are convinced that there is some sort of dog something hybrid that is dog coming for their maybe a little dog manish actually that's coming for their livestock and um what a lot of the science has found is they are in fact coyotes or they are species of wild dog or what? Um, hair. Oh, <laughs> that one, you made it in there. Uh -huh. Sick. Oh, uh, if you remind me at the end, I think we have a, an update via email from that family. Oh yeah, we do. Well, that's right. That's right. Um, yeah, we'll come back around to that. Um, DNA of dogs or coyotes. Yes. Often. Yes. This, and often with mange, which yeah. makes them look very weird in appearance. Mangy, if you will. Mangy, if you will. Um, I didn't know this. Mange is actually a parasite, mm -hmm. which causes the animals to, it's actually kind of fucked up and sad, but it causes them to like scratch at their own skin because the parasite makes them itch, which is part of what actually scrapes any fur of them off. They rub it against other things. They scratch, they bite themselves. And that's what turns their skin into this like sort of scabby, leathery, Thing, which is what makes them then become unrecognizable from a coyote or yeah. like a normal dog. It's because their whole Google hairless animals sometime if you want to have a bad time. Well, and that's the other thing is some of the species they think, especially in places like uh, in in Puerto Rico, is hairless dogs that then also get mange on top of it look particularly fucking weird if you're not used to seeing like a a mangy hairless dog. They look way different than a normal dog would look. Can like monkeys and other animals get mange? I I think so. I Did don't that explain the the upright nature of some of them? Yeah, one of the things I thought yeah, about like a hairless baboon that'd be fucking terrifying. That would be kind of terrifying. Well, it might just look like a person at that point. Fucked up looking one though. Fucked up looking one. Four feet tall. We also talked a little bit about historically. We've talked a little bit about um about how there is evidence of bears walking on their hind legs. Oh, yeah. And a mangy 
a hairless bear walking on its hind Oof. legs in Puerto Rico, I think it would 100%. Puerto Rico bears? I don't know. <laughs> I guess not. Maybe. <laughs> you said that with such certainty. I don't think there are bears that live in Puerto Rico. Por- no, you're right, actually, because I don't think they have anything. They don't have, like, big mammals in there. What? Puerto Rico bears. <laughs> like, the, like the biggest native. Maybe like a soccer team or something. The biggest, um, the biggest native mammals are not very big there. That's really? a thing I read. Yeah, like they don't have... Um, they got tiny bears? No, I mean like, like... Sun bears? Those guys are cute. I mean like natively they don't have big animals. They don't have like big deer or big mm. bears or big... Uh, let's see. Cats. Big cats. Mm. They got to have like some leopards or something. Maybe. I don't see. I don't see any leopards. I don't see any big cats in here. What, what is? Where is in here? I'm List looking of at Puerto a, Rican animals. A fauna of Puerto Rico article Sick. on the wiki. What do you got? Give me some of them. Uh, <laughs> what what animals live there? Yeah. Tell um, me all these ones that don't live there. What do they got? There's a Puerto Rican shrew, but it's extinct now. Well, that was a depressing way to start. Sorry, that was the first mammal listed. <laughs> they had one animal; it was tiny, and now it's dead. And now it's dead. Um, there is there are statements here that uh, when the Spanish colonized the island in the early 16th century, they brought domesticated animals like dogs, cats, goats, pigs, cattle, horses, and donkeys. Mm. They also brought rats, mm. dicks, stowaways. Mm. There's definitely uh, macaws. You've had trouble with this before. Are you talking about the bird or the monkey? Oh, uh, the monkey. Macaque. Macaque! You're right, it is macaque. <laughs> macaque. Uh, there are... Are there any, any rhesus? Any rhesus monkeys? That is the rhesus. The rhesus macaque. Oh, okay. Uh, there's manatees, but that doesn't explain our, Land our phenomenon manatees? either. No. Landatees? <laughs> Boo. <laughs> <laughs> no. Snakes. Um... Man... <laughs> What? Sorry, keep going. They what? got snakes. Did you say man? I, I tried the the worst version of that portmanteau, which is just man. I don't even understand. Man, manatee on land rather than a land oh, manatee. Oh, man. Got it. Yeah. Now I understand. Landatee was better. Landatee is definitely better. They got snakes. Snakes. Got any upright Fish. snakes? Nope. Yeah. Nope. Any snakes with sweet hair? Parrots. Well, mm. well combed. Well groomed. All right. So... What's happening? Uh, I thought you had the, like a crazy government conspiracy to well, tell me about first. Well, maybe I maybe do. You tell me what's happening. So, you, I think your point is well taken that um, we're probably talking about potentially multiple different things. Yeah. Because the I think, I think we're talking about people are bad at identifying animals, especially when they're sick. Yes. That is distinctly a big part of it. In fact, um, gentleman from earlier, the writer that I mentioned, Benjamin Radford, uh, has some pretty good... um, There's this BBC article called The Truth About a Strange Blood-Sucking Monster. And um, (laughs) Benjamin says... However, DNA tests revealed a pretty mundane reality. The bodies have invariably turned out to be coyotes, dogs, or raccoons, barring one that was actually a fish. Now, I need <laughs> I need to know how bad you need to be, to your point, at identifying things <laughs> wait, that wait, wait, you wait, think. Wait, wait. Where did they find it? I, I don't I don't know. I don't have I don't was have it a the, land fish? I don't have uh I would imagine it was found a lish, on the if land. You will. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> or perhaps a fan. <laughs> why, why is this your contribution for today? Portmanteaus uh, of land or sea animals? I don't know. Because what else are we supposed to do with this dumbass topic? Um, the guy saw a fish and didn't know what it was and said it. Like, this episode is over. A dude thought a fish was a chupacabra that, that was killing you, his goats. That's what I'm saying. How bad are you at identifying anything that you think that's what that is? Are you, is it in the water? Uh, no, I think it was not in the water, dude. If well, you then found how did a dead it get fish there? in water, how do fish get on land, Spencer? I don't, that, that is the question, right? People how take do, them out of the water mm, and drop them other places. Sometimes they get sucked up into storms and, and then they rain from the sky. You're right. You're mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and and then yes, the bloodless nature uh, is often attributed to lividity happening, and the deaths are often attributed to. Sometimes there are coyotes that think that uh, they own the fucking streets, and <laughs> they go out there and just break necks. Coyote gangs. Yeah, uh, they break necks. Mm. I do think it's weird though. Even if it was a, like a gang of coyotes, that they would just one by one go kill a whole fucking herd of sheep, like, and then just fuck off. Well, and I know I'm not a scientist or a biologist, but that just still seems weird to me that they wouldn't try to eat any of them. They would just be like, "You're dead, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead," and then they would just leave. Two but things. apparently, that's possibly a thing that can happen. Two things, though. The most it ever was was 150 in a month in like, we don't know how big of an area. Yeah. So it's not like they're killing a bunch in one night in the same place. Well, the eight were or found. Or one group of coyotes is the, doing all of this. The eight sheep were found overnight in all dead in the same manner. The, the, that mm-hmm. initial encounter was. Yeah, okay. That's pretty weird. Yeah. Um, but Rat, Radford's perspective, after literally researching this for five years, the dude traveled like a lot of different places. Who funds something like that? I don't know. It's a good question. Did he get a Chupacabra grant? I did find an... Inc- Can we get a Chupacabra grant? We should get a Chupacabra grant. I found an incredible uh, website. I don't know if you found this in your research. It is... Yes, my research. <laughs> yeah. All your research for today's episode. Uh, uh, did so much. What research are you referring to, Ryan? You're, you're, you're working on like <laughs> practicing portmanteaus for how to say something is from the land or sea. Uh, yeah. Check out uh, this Princeton.edu page. I'm oh, I, certain. I actually did see that. No one at Princeton has yeah. any idea is still alive. And it was made at least 20 years ago. Um, the copyright in the bottom is from 1996. Mm. Yes. And uh, <laughs> this page is maintained by Tito Armstrong. No, it's not because there's absolutely <laughs> no maintenance that's been done to this Chupacabra <laughs> homepage. Uh, I dude, did. Did give that one a look. I have to read. I just have to read the intro sentence to this because it's Please. so good. A myth, a legend. All we know is Shark, <laughs> savage teeth. Sorry. A myth, legend. <laughs> a myth, a legend. All we know is that it strikes in the night and has a weakness for blood. Put away the goats and any other household pets, my friends, because the chupacabra may be coming to a bar near you. <laughs> You say a barn or a bar? A barn near Got you. It. Find out more about Puerto Rico's version of the Yeti. What? The infamous Chupacabra. Finally, after three months of fearless research and daring expeditions, the Chupacabra homepage will at last be updated. Exclamation point, exclamation point, comma. For the next two <laughs> few weeks. We I'm excited, will- <laughs> but also. <laughs> but also, for the next few weeks, we will present you the latest on the Chupacabra phenom. Stay tuned. So those it's are a- just the show notes for today's episode, right? Guys, it's a GeoCities website from 1996 that has alien head banners on left and right and like a clip art Chupacabra illustration. Uh, there's a badge on here that says top 5% of all websites, which can't possibly have ever been true, much less true at well, this point. I mean, in 96, maybe, you, maybe Princeton.edu was at some point. That's, that's a good point. In like 78. That's a good point. Anyway, I don't know how they let someone at Princeton put this up on the website, but it's very hilarious Maybe to it's me. part of like a psych experiment or something. Uh, it could be. Oh, there's a mail to email address. Well, for Tito, I guess can, we're going we to get him on the show. Dear Tito, what did you find that we didn't find? Um, my favorite version of what people in Puerto Rico think is happening. And actually, uh, Benjamin Radford writes about this. He thinks that it's a possibility that, um, this is this concept could very well be explained naturally. Well, he maintains that that it is explained naturally. Um, but he thinks that part of the reason that Puerto Ricans potentially believe in the Chupacabra is based on some uh, anti-American sentiments mm-hmm. and that um, they think that there was top secret United States scientific experiments taking place in the El Yunque rainforest. When you say they, you just mean Puerto Ricans, some Puerto Ricans, Puerto Rican people who believe uh, in the Chupacabra. Got it. Uh, And they believe that there is a possibility that during a hurricane in Puerto Rico, 
this there and there is a US base in the LUNK that's not far from Tolentino's hometown, the woman who had the first initial explanation. Um they there is there is a theory that a hurricane damaged the US scientific experiment laboratory and that whatever came out was this hybridized fucked up weird animal that got set loose on the people of Puerto Rico's livestock. So they've also seen Jurassic Park. A little bit. <laughs> little bit they watched species in jurassic park in the same year and made each story and some goats died one story yes and attributed one became the backstory of the other Mm -hmm. and dead goats became the role players yep um the other i'm I'm starting to like this story more actually (laughs) if i mean if we're gonna have a wild ass story give me full-on wild ass story at least make it fun yes um, there also is, this is maybe Did the aliens orchestrate the hurricane. Um, well, no, but was Nick, the government fucking with the weather. Nick Redfern did give oh, us, Oh my guy, <laughs> Nick Redfern did give us the phrase alien big cats, which is, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, is pretty awesome. About the, the British big cats. Are you familiar with this? What? Alien the, big cats. Yeah. Oh, well, the, 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 like ones that live in areas where they're not supposed to. Uh, like the British ones, the big black panthers and stuff in, in the UK? I'm not familiar with that one specifically, but yes, it is big cats that live where they're not supposed to live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm familiar with this concept. Okay, cool. Um, we need to get an interview uh, of of him saying alien big cats so you can have the drop alien big cats. I've played it before. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, now I kind of vaguely remember There's that, There's like a BBC documentary or something, and they just like it's this very dramatic opening yes. shot yes. on like a, a CGI panther walking across a field, and they, some guy just goes, alien big cats. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's I've, right. I've got it somewhere. That's right. Um, we, we need to get this woman to read it, though. Sharp, yes. savage teeth, <laughs> alien, hairless, big, gray grass, skin, hairless. and a human-like fist. <laughs> human-like fist is such a weird way to culminate that sentence. So <laughs> weird. The photo is fucked up, though. It's one of the better ones I came across. For sure. Okay, so you've got the natural causes we talked about, right? We talked about some sort of predator. Wait, wh- why Why did you bring up Nick Redford? And Hang Alien on, I'm, giving, oh, I'm okay, coming back okay. to it. Um, we've got natural mangy coyotes killing livestock. Yeah. Um, we've got potentially a botched, mutated mm-hmm. U.S. experiment in the rainsaur. <laughs> yes, in the, the rainforest. Rainsaurus? Uh, you almost said rainsaurus? The, the rainsaurus. <laughs> rainosaurus. Uh, the rainforest um, that was hit by a hurricane and sent mutants into the world. Sure, sure. Um, Nick Redfern gives us the possibility of alien big cats, which for those who don't know uh, are, like Spencer said, they're large animals lynx cheetahs cougars lions tigers that aren't panthers jaguars yes that live in places they're not naturally found and not supposed to live it's often uh sadly part of like the illegal animal trade where oh so there's some actual cases of this yeah this is a real thing um that like a, a great example is uh like Sometimes drug dealers who want cool, mm. crazy things will be like, I will pay Let millions. Let me buy a of, tiger. Yeah, I want a tiger on my island, and then it escapes, or they cut it loose because they don't want anything to do with it anymore, or right, whatever, whatever. A tiger in your house is fucking terrifying. Right. Um, but then sometimes what comes of that is there's a leopard living in a jungle or a city where a fucking leopard should not be living. Right. And then- Eating stuff. A leopard goes around and fucking breaks the necks of a bunch of sheep and goes back into the forest. Because everyone knows leopards hate sheep. Right, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we all hate goes sheep. Goes back millions of honest. years. Who doesn't hate sheep? sheep? Are okay. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, t- uh, tiger cubs have been found in other places. Um, there was two tiger cubs that actually did escape an enclosure in Puerto Rico at one point. So mm. Redfern insinuates that is it possible that like a male and female escaped and created some Ooh, tiny tiger gang, tiny tiger gang in the, the jungles of Puerto Rico? Put it on the list. Tiger, tiny tiger gang. Tiny tiger gang is pretty fucking strong. Mm. Maybe uh, maybe tiny tiger gang is the first album by Suck Goat. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Goat Sucker, and we're a metal band. Goat Suck. Or, or Goat Sucker. Goat Sucker. We're a metal band. All right, Goat Sucker is pretty good too. We're a metal band. <laughs> Duh. Or Duh. maybe like thrash or something. I don't really know mag genres. Most, I feel like most of the band names you come up with are pretty good. Metal we have loud names. guitars and two bass drums. That's all I know. Mm. Um, 
There was another very shysty, shady, not very good website I found uh, that insinuated that there have been paired UFO sightings over Puerto Rico. See, this is the shit you got to lead with if you want me to pay attention. Okay, well... You wait until the end for tiger gangs and UFO sightings? Strange lights in the sky over... I'm reading from a... I'm going to edit this back into the beginning (laughs) of the episode so other people keep listening. Singular 14 uh, is a website I found that says... Uh, they, they do great, in quotes, work. They post a lot of wild shit. Okay. That's where all the, the, the Mothman stuff in the last couple of years has come from. I'll read um, I'll read this paragraph verbatim from Singular 14. Uh, Strange lights in the sky over P- Puerto Rico had locals worrying that perhaps the creature responsible for the phenomenon was some sort of alien. UFO reports came from the same area as the attacks, and the frequency of both phenomena seemed to increase simultaneously. An enormous cigar-shaped object was seen hovering in the air over the suburb of Coopy. It reportedly shined yellow light from a rectangular porthole. And in May, three star-like objects flew over the town of Fajarado, and witnesses swore that the objects were neither natural nor man-made. Later that month, over the skies of Rio Piedras and San Juan were large glowing balls of light, house-sized craft, and a dark object with a red light on top that performed strange maneuvers upon retreating into the night sky. Got two theories. Similar reports took place later in the 90s during the rash of sightings that gave us the chupacabras as we know it today. First theory. Yes. Turf wars. Sorry? The aliens thought they had a monopoly on cattle mutilation. Chupacabra was encroaching on their business. And they said, give us our blood. Aliens got to retaliate. Second theory. The aliens were previously unaware of Chupacabra Mm. and now need to catalog it Mm. via abduction like they've been doing with the rest of the, the inhabitants of Earth. I see. So Chupacabra was attacking things in the area and the aliens were like, yoink. Oh, shit, we missed come. one. That's a new animal. We got to get gotta a, snatch it up. We got to get us a copy of that one. Sure. Well, maybe it's all combined, right? Maybe the mutants escaped from the U.S. facility and started attacking things and the aliens mm. were like, oh, shit, new animal. That's we got to go get it. And gotta then they catch brought it up. Right. Or third Third hypothesis or, slash theory slash none of these are real things. Or um, the aliens are outsourcing the cattle mutilation work and they've crossbred two types of or multiple types of earth animals to create the perfect cattle mutilating machine mm-hmm. and then reinserted it back into their, their test site, which mm-hmm. is Puerto Rico. I think we're done here. Yep. Solved. <laughs> <laughs> done and done. Solved. I think we're solved. Do we want to go through that update uh, about the kid who can turn on televisions with her mind real quick? Uh, Sure. Why not? Do you happen to have our email open? I do. I'll pull it up right okay. here. Brilliant. Um, that was, yeah, that was on the free show last week, right? We're following up on a thing yeah, that people yeah. actually heard. We talked yeah, about, okay. uh, we talked about creepy, the creepy kids. Um, right, right. So shout out to- What? <laughs> yes, that video <laughs> uh, or audio, I guess. Um. Thanks to thanks to you, Travis, for uh, not only for reaching out but for following up. Um, so, yeah, I'll, should I just read it? Yeah, sure. All right. So Travis says uh, this is a follow up to the Creepy Kids episode. This won't make any sense if you didn't listen to last week's episode. You should go listen to it. It was a good episode. Uh, I don't feel like the title did it justice. We called it "What If Kids Are Creepy," and it's so much better than that because we got some really good, interesting, like strange paranormal stories uh that i don't think fully like matched the the title itself so anyway go listen to it but travis follows up and says uh hey guys thanks for the shout out today i was trying to figure out the deal with kids and ghosts and i stumbled across a couple articles theorizing that a toddler's eye is able to see a wider spectrum of uv rays and that this fades as they age i haven't been able to find the articles i delved into last year at the time of the tv incident but they are out there in my quick google sleuthing i came across this one and he links to an article And he says, two other quick things about our daughter. While visiting a friend at Mayo in Rochester, we tried finding a picnic spot. We ended up not finding the access to the park, but saw a clearing. As we got closer to the clearing, she wanted to play with the kids. And when we got closer, we discovered that not only was it a cemetery, but that the area was a children's cemetery. No, I didn't have my sound up. Keep going. After leaving, (laughs) she said she had to make, excuse me, after leaving, she had to make sure she waved goodbye. What? Yes. What, indeed. 
Uh, uh, so she can see dead kids? Is that what's being implied there? Yes, that she wanted to play with the kids in a clearing, and it turned out to be a cemetery for children. Tight. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, the second point, Travis says, uh, we were remarking this morning that nothing usual, unusual has happened in the last few months, and we're wondering if our daughter was moving past it since she is now over three. Recently, the only thing she's done is that every time my partner has a nightmare, my our daughter wakes up screaming. We didn't think anything too much of the coincidence until today before her nap she said keep your mind in your own head mom it comes down here and wakes me up jeez yuck i hate that so much this is a little unnerving (laughs) telepathy and telekinesis are okay i've just got my fingers crossed that pyrokinesis isn't part of the deal hopes all is well travis yikes thanks travis same to you and by hope all is well we mean seriously we hope all is well and like, and that you're all like still alive yes please send us regular updates uh that say that it is okay <laughs> um just another reminder this is the last reminder we'll be able to give you we'll put it out on social media but february 2nd that's a saturday at 2 p.m central time in the u.s uh we're gonna do our facebook live so go to our facebook group and uh, and our Facebook page, and you'll be able to watch that and hang out with us there. Also, patreon.com slash whatifpodcast. We do two episodes a week. You are hearing one of those two episodes. It's only five bucks a month, and you get four extra episodes a month. That's an extra episode every single week. And uh, we have a lot of fun in there. You can join uh, hundreds of folks who are already hanging us hanging out with us there. It's uh, patreon.com slash whatifpodcast. Uh, that's all I got. We out of here! We love you guys. As always, we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.